Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I wanted to share with you a little bit of a side project I've been doing here. Uh, <laughs> a little bit focused on rust right now. I guess that's my slight, uh, maybe autistic nature. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I've been kind of, kind of getting into rust bluing uh, and also rust removal. Obviously, we did the video on evaporust versus electrolysis a little while back. One thing I did want to try, because I'm completely blown away by Evaporust, it is uh, by far the best rust removal product I've ever used. Uh, tons of people were commenting, oh, it's just vinegar, oh, it's just citric acid, it's just phosphoric acid, um, all things that work well to re remove rust, uh, but those are all acids. Evaporust is neutral. It's like a 6.5 pH, totally neutral, uh, like like milk, basically. Um, it also doesn't attack the underlying base metal, as uh, most or all those acids will do. So I wanted to try to replicate uh, basically a DIY version of Evaporust. Now the thing is, Evaporust is pretty cheap. I think a gallon at my local Pet Boys was like 15 bucks, something like that. Um, so one, it's going to be it's not going to be. It is hard to replicate that kind of price level. Uh, but I think I actually do have something that is significantly cheaper and works just as well. It might just be a little bit slower. So I want to show you guys what I have here and let's get to it. So the way Evaporust actually works is which what I have in this little glass over here. Uh, it is a chelating agent and basically it selectively I guess absorbs would be the right word. Um, it, it's basically a long chain molecule that takes in the iron atoms or compounds. I'm not sure if it's actually taking in the Fe203, uh, which is the chemical compound for red rust, or if it's just taking in the iron atoms, leaving the oxygen to, I guess, come out of solution. Not too sure. <laughs> but... Nonetheless, uh, on their site, they do say it is a chelating agent with some sort of sulfur, uh, some kind of sulfur base in its molecular structure. I was not able to find what chelating agent they actually use, but a lot of folks on a lot of various forms were pointing to uh, EDTA, and there's several forms of this. There's straight EDTA, which I could not find. There's disodium EDTA, uh, which is readily available, and there's tetrasodium EDTA, which I actually happen to have a bag of. <laughs> so I decided I would do my experimentation with this one, uh, just having it handy. Now, the issue is evaporust is neutral. Tetrasodium EDTA, or EDTA4NA, is quite alkaline. So I needed a buffer to actually bring it right back to that kind of neutral line, which is where I use citric acid, which is also a known chelator or a known chelation agent and is a nice safe way to buffer it right back to the neutral scale. And I got to tell you guys, this stuff works really, really well. These are two very, very inexpensive compounds to purchase in bulk. You can actually make your solution less expensive than the cost of evaporon. So it really could not get much easier to make this stuff. <laughs> We're gonna start out with some reverse osmosis water. You could also use uh, deionized, distilled, or possibly even tap water if you had pretty pure water. My concern with our tap water, we have very high mineral content, so I'd be worried about those kind of messing up the efficacy of it. Next, for every 100 milliliters, I'm going to weigh out 5 grams of the tetrasodium EDTA. So, obviously, 500, so I'm going for 25 grams. Now, I did try some other chelating agents that I have on hand. Uh, none of them were as good as the tetrasodium EDTA. These, uh, these measurements also aren't particularly critical. Um, 
you can really be pretty lax. You could you could add some extra, you could leave some out. It's really not gonna matter much. So if I take the pH paper right now, you'll see we have a pretty darn alkaline solution. About right where you'd expect to see it at 11. What we need to do is buffer this down to a neutral and obviously we're using citric acid to do so. So you want to add it bit by bit. It is very easy to overshoot this. It's basically a little titration. And obviously before you check your pH, you want to make sure it is all dissolved. You can have uh, citric acid sitting at the bottom and <laughs> you check your pH, you think you're good. And then, you know, it, it sits for a while, all the rest of the citric dissolves in and suddenly you have a very acidic solution. I would say that is right between six and the seven. I think that's pretty good. I can get the finer pH paper and actually check, but it really doesn't matter. Uh, just has to kind of be in the right ballpark. So at this point, your solution is essentially made. Now, one thing that I did do is add a surfactant in order to help it wet the rust better, uh, in order to chelate it away. And that's very simple. You just add a few drops of dishwashing liquid um, this actually is not great value. This is, this is just the bottle I use. Uh, I think this is Kirkland. Their biodegradable dish soap. And it's that easy. <laughs> Our DIY evaporust is made. So I think at this point we should give it a shot. <laughs> and you can see I have some old rusty bolts surrounded by my beautiful rusty nuts. And, uh... Some of these are kind of rust welded on, some not so much, but they're all generally in the same state of decay. You're going to love my nuts. What we're going to test is obviously evaporust versus our homemade solution. Uh, again, I'm going to tell you this does take an extra day, but I think it works just as well. Then we're also going to test some vinegar and citric acid solution uh there were a couple of people on the last video who almost had a stroke because i didn't test vinegar or citric acid also quite a few people saying phosphoric acid i do not have any phosphoric acid so i can't test that one but uh let's get these all soaking and see what they do first up let's pour some evapo rust in here now this is used evapo rust. Uh, I should have gotten a new bottle for this, uh, but even new, the stuff is, is green. So I don't know if you guys would have seen anything useful. So here goes nothing. Here's our homemade evapo rust. And then we will put some vinegar in here. And let's whip up a little citric acid solution. I'm not going to measure it. I'm just going to eyeball. So apologies to you purists out there, but deal with it. If you want to watch someone be an expert, go watch Nile Red. That's probably a pretty concentrated solution, to be honest. Now, vinegar is a great choice. It's dirt cheap. It does look to be working pretty, pretty well already. The issue is you got to remember you have it in there. And usually when you're fiddling around in the shop, at least I know in the case of myself, I get distracted way too freaking easily. I have horrible ADHD. <laughs> and, uh, I'll get lost in the shop in a heartbeat. So let's see how the citric does. Wow, that's bubbling. Well, kind of slow down. Looks to be just about as active as the vinegar, I guess. So again, here's our evapo rust. This is our homemade uh, rust chelating solution. This is white vinegar, and this is the citric acid solution, which is kind of already getting a little bit of a a tinge of a dissolved rust color. Now, citric acid, in addition to being acidic, is also a very good chelator. So. That's, that's got a, an interesting combo going for it. Of course, we have both citric acid and uh, tetrasodium EDTA in here. Neutralized, 
I guess there would be some sort of co complexing going on. I'm not, not sure exactly how that chemistry would work. All right, guys. So here we are eight hours in. You see our control hasn't changed. Crazy. <laughs> the citric acid is doing a phenomenal job. As many of you contended it would. The vinegar... Vinegar did a really good job initially at removing the bulk, but it seems that there's still a lot that it's really kind of unable to touch. And that might just need scraped off. Just touching at it real gently here. It does seem to come off very, very easily. Um, so maybe just a quick brush and that would be pretty free of rust. Um, I do prefer a, a hands-off approach though, that way you always kind of know when the part's done. The citric acid looks to be, uh, pretty damn hands-off. It, it seems to be doing a good job of chelating the iron away from the part. So, basically you, you know when it's done, you don't have to go in and occasionally scrub it. Now... For uh, comparison's sake, let's take a look at our part in our DIY chelating solution. And let's compare that to the evapor rust. Now I've been agitating these probably every hour. Just to make sure they all have... <laughs> okay, well, here's our answer. <laughs> Uh, the evapor rust is clearly light years ahead of all the other methods. I mean, Jesus, this looks <laughs> looks like a new bolt. Even the threads seem pretty damn good. Yeah, the threads here are moving pretty good too. So I did mention this does seem to be a little bit slower, um, taking at least twice as long. Now, I also did play with different concentrations. I found the 5% by mass to kind of be a sweet spot. I, I tried up to 20% and also uh, down to 2 And 5% seems to be a sweet spot for the rust removal using the tetrasodium EDTA. Um, anything above 15% actually seemed to really slow it down. So I'll add that back in there too. And we'll let them continue. Now, a lot of guys on the forums did mention that they believe evaporust to be based on EDTA. However, on their FAQ, they mentioned that their chelating agent has some sort of sulfur-containing molecule, which obviously tetrasodium EDTA does not. So, while I think we have a, a pretty close simulant here, it's, it's clearly not what they're using in the industrial stuff. They, they've really guarded this. I, I looked for hours trying to figure out what their compound is. I cannot find a damn thing on it. So, kudos to Evaporus for a proper trade secret. I, uh, <laughs> I would freaking love to know what they're using, but I cannot for the life of me find out. It's cool stuff. Has a unique smell, too. Uh, a bit of a sweet... A bit of a sweet smell. Kind of like uh, carbonized sugar. Alright guys, it has been just over a day. And I guess it's time to take my rusty nuts and bolts out of the soak. Let's see how they fared. Looking good. Obviously the evapor rust has been uh, unnecessarily soaking. This thing was done probably within like eight hours. Totally rust free. But just for comparison's sake, I, I left it in there. Beauty. Get the condom off this. Oh! Must have been a Trojan on there. So... 
the vinegar. There's still rust on it. I think if you were to just brush this, it would come up pretty damn good. But there's still a, a fair bit of, like... There's still a fair bit of rust in there. I'll, I'll probably just uh, take this over to the sink and hit it with the scrubber real quick. And of course the citric acid, which actually did a really phenomenal job. This is definitely, definitely a great alternative. My main concern with the citric acid is, of course, you could basically etch the... Wow. I don't know if it helped the threads much. It all looks pretty clean. It's just locked on there pretty good. Um... Yeah, my main concern with the citric acid would be etching the underlying base metal. Of course, with neutral solutions, you really don't have to worry about that. These two highly acidic solutions, you could definitely run into some etching issues. And, you know, if you forget it for a week or something, then you could <laughs> dissolve a good chunk of your base metal away. So I definitely think we have a pretty damn comparable uh, solution to evapo rust here. It seems to work really well. You don't have to worry about your base metal getting etched. It's a nice neutral solution. This is a winner to me. And the cost is pretty freaking inexpensive. So I actually just went through and calculated the price for making this stuff. It is unbelievably cheap. So the tetrasodium EDTA, to make a gallon, uh, you're going to be spending about 50 cents. Uh, this sells five pounds for 30 bucks on Amazon. I got the smaller bag, so you pay a little premium. Uh, even that works out to like 70 cents so, uh, per gallon. And the citric acid is even cheaper. Five pounds is, uh, I think, 15 bucks on Amazon. So we're talking maybe 75 cents, maybe 80 cents uh, to make a gallon of this solution. So I think this is actually pretty viable. <laughs> so for you guys out there who can't get Evaporus or need huge amounts of it you know if you got to fill a 55 gallon drum i think this is actually maybe the way to go you might have to wait an extra day but i'd say that's damn worth it <laughs> well guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed if you like the channel please consider supporting it on patreon just a buck or two goes a very long way in uh helping keep these videos rolling so i appreciate every one of my patrons out there got a lot of cool projects in the works and uh Definitely getting into some rocketry stuff for the spring. So, <laughs> uh, please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, drop a comment, and I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.